Good morning. Welcome to St. Sarah Parish. As for me in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with a vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to better celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from heavens the rain and the snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it a fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Leave it out. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and 
ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. When the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell upon, among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, the plans of God come to fruition, if you will. That seems to be the message in both Isaiah and in the gospel passage. So in Isaiah, we have this natural phenomenon of rain and snow come down, and they don't return to heaven until they water the earth, making it fertile and fruitful. So this plan of God, this unfolding of God's work, it comes to completion. And the prophet proclaims that God is saying this about his own word. What God speaks to us will have its effect. God's word is epiphox. It happens. It makes happen what it says. That's so clear in the creation story. God said, let there be, and so there is. And so God's word will not return to him void, but will achieve what he sent it for. And of course, the Word, the second person of the Trinity, became fully human in Jesus of Nazareth. And so he did not return to God until his mission had been fulfilled. We have this kind of sloppy way of sowing seed, broadcasting. And uh, I grew up, and we used to do that with rye in the fall. Uh, to give it like a winter coat, so you kind of just broadcast the seed. My father, my grandfather, it was pretty even. Me, you could see street, <laughs> green streaks, <laughs> wherever it went. But it's kind of a sloppy way. It kind of goes where it wants to, especially if you're not good at the gestures. But see, we see this wheat being planted, this good seed being planted in this kind of haphazard way, if you will. And it falls in different places. And each of these things could be reflected upon, I suppose, the, uh, the path, and the birds come and eat it up. But really, is that totally wasted? The birds have to eat too. Father Ernest used to say when we'd go out to pick apricots, don't steal all of the birds' food. <laughs> and, but, the, so the, but also then some of it, they, they, it sticks to their feathers, gets planted somewhere else, or in their droppings it gets planted. But that whole idea that somehow it seems wasted, but even then, it really isn't. It fed the birds, if nothing else. Next one is that, you know, that rocky ground. And it's not very much so, not very deep. And so when it gets hot, the sun scorch it, scorches it, and it withers, has no depth of roots. So it doesn't really amount to anything. But again, somehow, even then, it's perhaps stopping some erosion, some dust blowing around. So it's not completely wasted. And then the thorns, and often we see the thorns as over -concern, the concerns of this world, which can, can affect us so much. And certainly we have many of those today. We have many thorns. So the thorns grow and they choke it. They're more powerful. They choke the young wheat. It can't produce. And then a very simple, but some seed fell on rich soil and produce fruit. One commentator I read, Sister Mary McGlone, uh, said this is where we should really focus. Because if we focus on the other ones too much, we might forget that the, some of the seed 
that landed in the rich soil produces a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. The yield of the harvest. I remember it was one of the few kind of excitement or disappointments that my grandfather would show when they would um, combine the, the, the wheat or the oats or the soybeans. What was the yield per acre? And when it was a good year, it was exciting because somehow you felt that you did a good job. Plus, you'd make more money. But the Lord's seed produces a lot, a hundredfold. So if you planted a bushel, you're going to get a hundred bushel or 60, or 30. So in other words, again, God's purpose is for this to, to happen. And it happens. And so we need to focus, I suppose, on that reality that God is indeed at work. And even though some seed gets eaten up by birds along the path, some doesn't make it to maturity because it's in crummy ground or wet shallow or gets choked out by weeds and thorns. But some does produce great fruit. And I think also in our, so we recognize that somehow we need to focus on that, on that positive reality. So this, this whole notion that somehow things that are good and true and beautiful somehow yield an image of God, reveal a little bit of God to us. And so as we trust that indeed God's plan cannot be completely thwarted by us, it can be messed up, we can get in the way, and evil can be done, it certainly has been done, and any reading of history will show that. Uh, sometimes huge evils perpetrated on people, other times natural things like this virus that we keep plodding along, plodding along with, and all of these different things, but somehow it's not the final answer. God's word has been spoken. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. And he's gone back to the Father after our salvation, not before it. So God's word does not return until it has watered the earth, and made it fruitful. And we in our lives have to focus. Yeah, we have to make sure, you know, there's, you can get all kinds of moral implications there. Are, are you the beaten path? Are you rocky soil? Are you thorny soil, thorn patch? Or are you good soil? And that's one way to look at the passage. But again, that's more people-centered, isn't it, rather than God-centered. God just throws out God's gifts haphazardly like broadcasting seed. And they fall where they may. But that which falls in the right place does produce a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Let us together profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, 
who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence, let us now raise our voices in petition to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the church. May we emulate the model of the sower, and may the seed we sow produce good fruit. Let us pray that the thorns of disease, hunger, and poverty that have a chokehold on the most vulnerable may be cleared away, allowing the fruits of God's goodness to flourish in the world. Let us pray for an end of violence. May we collectively turn toward peace and bring forth the world without the senseless loss of life. Lord, hear our Let us pray for those struggling to recover from natural disasters, storms and floods, fires and earthquakes. May they find assistance, comfort, and hope. Let us pray for those on summer vacations. May they return home safely, renewed and refreshed from their travels. Let us pray for those who are ill for those who have died, and for the eternal repose of Maria Flores, for whom this math is offered in a particular way. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask that you receive the prayers that we have voiced as well as those we have held in the silence of our hearts. We ask all of this through your Son, Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring her greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Hosea, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Maria, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass. We forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please do pick up a bulletin or read it online. There's some important information about next year 
uh, in my column. Thank you.